Good evening, church. Good evening as we continue our Advent journey once again this evening and each evening through Christmas Eve. My name is Pastor Bob Demianovich and I'm the pastor here at Cass City United Methodist Church and I wish to thank you for joining us this evening. Since church is closed for in-person worship, we wish to share this evening's Advent lesson, our children's story, and our music and our songs with you together as a family. We will have three ways to watch this Advent devotional. You can watch it on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, or through our website www.castcityumc.org. We plan on having a live Christmas Eve worship on December 24th at 4 p.m. at Cass City United Methodist Church. And we invite you to join us online or in our parking lot for this service. Christmas in the Barn by Margaret Wise Brown, illustrated by Anna Dudney. In a big, warm barn in an ancient field, the oxen lowed, the donkey squealed, the horses stomped and the cattle sighed, and quietly the daylight died in the sunset of the west. And a star rose brighter than all the stars in the sky. The field mice scampered in the hay. And two people who had lost their way walked into the barn at the end of the day. And they were allowed to sleep in the hay because there was no room in the inn. The little mice rustled in the sweet dry grass, near the lambs and the kine and the ox and the ass. The horses pawed the golden straw, the little donkey brayed, hee-haw, hee-haw. 
And there they were, all safe and warm, all together in that ancient barn. When hail, the first well of a newborn babe, reached the night, where one great star was burning bright. And shepherds with their sheep are come to watch him sleep. What child is this who is born here where the oxen stomp and peer? Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. What child is this who lays down his sweet head? In the big warm barn in the ancient field, the little child sleeps, the donkey squeals. The star goes down, yet the wise men stay to see the dawning of Christmas Day. The child sleeping in the hay. And there they were, all safe and warm, all together in that ancient barn. The end. Today's Advent story will be from 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 13, and also Matthew 1, 1, and it's entitled, The Family Line. But first, a uh, reading from 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 13. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. Your own flesh and blood and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish a throne of his kingdom forever. It is an unconditional promise. Your house and your kingdom will be established forever before you. Your throne will be established forever. Speaking of Solomon, David's son, who was later to build the temple his father had promised. God says that his mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. The prophet Jeremiah reaffirms that David's throne will rule Israel and will do so forever. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Jeremiah's prophecy, which is in contact, is part of the prophecy about Israel in the millennium. It emphasizes that there will always be a monarch ruling the house of Israel. David's throne, the authority of his dynasty, is not limited to the tribe of Judah, whence David himself sprang, but extends over the entire house of Israel. We should not expect, therefore, to find David's dynasty in a Gentile nation. God says it will rule Israel. The promise of an eternal throne, an everlasting dynasty, is a reaffirmation of what Jacob by faith had come to understand centuries before. Speaking of Judah's descendants in the last days, he prophesies that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. There would be a period of time when Judah would not bear rule. However, once God placed the scepter in Judah's hand, we can expect that the house of David would rule ever after. Clearly God placed the scepter in David's hand. We can therefore count on David's dynasty to rule over Israel in perpetuity. The same faith that worked in Jacob was at work in David 
when he speaks confidently of God's steadfast love to his posterity. In Psalm 89, 35 and 37, David says that God has sworn by my holiness. I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. And his throne as the sun before me, it shall be established forever. Like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. God's promise of power to David and his promise of wealth to Joseph. Do not conflict, for there is an important distinction between the birthright and the scepter. God chose Joseph specifically, Ephraim and Manasseh, to be the recipients of the great physical blessings associated with the birthright. We see this specifically in Jacob's blessing of Joseph's boys, recorded in Genesis 48, 12 through 20 as well as the blessings listed in Deuteronomy 33, 13 through 17. To use Jacob's words, the birthright blessing would be up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. This is a promise of great wealth and prosperity. I continue with a reading from Matthew 1. One, this is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. From the very first verse in Matthew's Gospel to the closing statement in John's Apocalypse, the focal figure of the New Testament is Jesus Christ, and the thrilling testimony is salvation by grace through faith to all who believe. Although this long list of descendants trailing back through David to Abraham may appear to be somewhat meaningless, it date stamps legitimacy on the authority, authenticity, and ancestry on Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, who was married to Joseph the carpenter. Luke's lineage of Christ goes back through David and Abraham to Adam, the son of God. But Matthew's genealogy places its foundational root firmly in Israel. The chosen people of God who were promised that a star would come forth out of Jacob and a ruler would rise out of Israel. The significance of David and Abraham being the two identifying descendants of Christ are unprecedented in the first verse of the New Testament scripture. Unless Christ is able to be traced back as the promised seed of Abraham, through the royal line of David, every other prophecy of his first and second comings would be null and void. Christ would certainly be the seed of the woman as promised to Adam in the idyllic garden, but his ancestry must also be traced through Abraham's promised seed and through the royal line of Israel's great King David. Matthew traces his Jewish genealogy through David and Solomon to Joseph, the husband of Mary. Joseph was chosen by God to be the adoptive father of Jesus, the Son of God, while Luke uncovers an alternative but equally legitimate lineage. Starting with Adam, the first created man, we see Luke's ancestry tracing through Abraham to Nathan, a second son of the great King David, rather than his son and heir, King Solomon. This lineage brings us finally to Heli, the father of Marys, who was married to Joseph the carpenter. We read that Jesus was from the house of, and lineage of David. And Matthew's Gospel shows that both Christ's legal and well as his lineage requirements were correct. Although the lineage of Christ as a descendant of David was certainly evident in both Matthew and Luke's genealogies, only Matthew was able to provide the legal status required for Jesus to be anointed as the legitimate king of Israel. Like her husband Joseph, Mary was indeed a true blood descendant of the house and lineage of David. 
as the prophets foretold, but Jewish law dictated that the legal as well as the lineage right to the throne of David must pass through the Father to the Son. Mary was a virgin when she conceived the Lord Jesus. However, Joseph took Mary to be his lawfully wedded wife, and in so doing, Jesus became his lawfully adopted son. The legal marriage union of Mary and Joseph gave legitimacy to Christ's claim to be Israel's Messiah, King. Jesus, the unique Son of the living God, was born into a, the human race as Jesus, the immaculately conceived Son of Man. He was born of Mary, but also the lawfully adopted Son of Joseph. Claiming the legal right and the authentic lineage to be born, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. wonder consider all the world thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. That God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take on. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home 
what joy shall fill my heart and then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul with me for our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, as I read your word and consider the truth that it contains, I see that your ways are so much greater than man can imagine. You gave your Son to be born as Son of Man, just as the prophets of old foretold. Thank you for your plans and purposes which were made in eternity past and it can never be changed and that one day Jesus is returning as King of the Kings to sit on the throne of David where he will reign in righteousness and rule in justice. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I also ask this evening that we pray, continue to pray for Chuck Erla, for Don Green, for Dorothy Manti, for Ron Geiger, for all who are feeling under the weather due to this COVID-19 pandemic. I ask you to pray for healing. I ask you to pray for our Lord Jesus' blessing on all of us, especially during this Advent season, especially as we approach the birth of our Lord and Savior. Keep in your hearts prayer, because prayer does work. Pray for your family, pray for others, and just know that God does love you. And there's nothing you can do about that. Amen.